Thanks, Martin. As Martin mentioned, my name is Dave Mount. I'm a partner at the venture capital firm Kleiner, Perkins, Caulfield, and Byers. We're very privileged to be investors in OSIsoft, and I've had the great fortune of working with OSIsoft for the last six years since we made our investment. In addition to my work with OSIsoft, I also have the opportunity to work with a lot of other industrial software companies, to work with industry analysts, with consultants, with investment banks, and many others who are interested in this topic of digital transformation. So we're going to talk a little bit today about the, the industry trends that are driving digital transformation, and we're going to start that off with a bit of a pop quiz. We're going to do some level setting. So the first question, think in, think in your mind, try to come up with an answer here, and, uh, and we'll run through this pretty quickly. But Guess the number of Android phones that were shipped in 2016 worldwide. Number of Android phones, come up with that number. You got the number? 1.2 billion, nearly the population of all of India. The next question, the number of Dropbox users. Get that number in your mind? 500 million, more than one and a half times the population of the United States. In the first six months that Windows 10 was rolled out, it was downloaded 110 million times. Next question. The number of monthly active Facebook users. This is not the number of people who have downloaded the Facebook app, but the number of monthly active Facebook users checking in once a month. Got your number? 1.7 billion. In uh, active Netflix subscribers, that's 75 million, or one and a half times the population of South Africa. And the, in the first three days that the iPhone 6S was released, it sold 13 million phones. My new favorite one, this is for extra credit, but there's a, there's a song called Hello by Adele. Not sure if any of you are familiar with it, but in the first 87 days that that song was released on YouTube, first 87 days, guess how many views it had? Anyone? A billion. A billion views of a single YouTube video in 87 days. So we are in the midst of a massive period of digitization and increased digital literacy in the world, but it's not just happening in digital media. It's happening across all of industry. Industries like power, utilities, agriculture, chemicals, the big six industries that make up the core of OSIsoft's customer base and many of the industries that you guys work in in this room. And what I find so exciting is it's not just the one-third of the global economy that are digital native that are experiencing these transformations, but it's the two-thirds of the global economy that are experiencing it now. And it's, it's the work that's going to be done by the group in this room that is going to be driving that transformation forward. So suddenly, though, everyone seems interested in this concept of digitization. So what is driving this interest? We'll start by, uh, the short answer is competitiveness. There's some data that's going to show up here from McKinsey, but we also have data from PwC, from Accenture, and from many others showing that digital leaders in their market have greater revenue growth, they have higher profits, and ultimately they leave, lead to higher shareholder returns. So you bet that these types of statistics are going to drive board-level conversations around digitization. Additionally, the value estimates for digitization and the digitization of industry particularly are measured in the trillions. In fact, uh, the World Economic Forum in association with Accenture came out with a report this January that the global opportunity for the digitization of industry is now 100 trillion. As though 1 trillion or 10 trillion wouldn't have been enough. I put five industry segments up here to show in aggregate some of OSIsoft's customer base, the most relevant, showing an aggregate of $3.6 trillion of potential value creation across electricity, oil and gas, automotive, mining, and chemistry, industries that I believe you all touch here. Some examples of this, ADB has announced $180 billion of potential value creation from building energy efficiency. Shell has announced it sees potential for 50% maintenance cost improvements by using uh, digitization. And there are, there are many others. You're going to hear 72 other stories over the course of the next few days about the value of this digitization. And I put this up here to show you that while the work being done in each of your companies is terrific and worthy of all of these presentations, when you aggregate all of that together, it's almost astounding. The numbers for value creation and transformation are, are somewhat astounding. And it's only in a room like this that you can really get a sense, sense for that. So technologically, though, what is driving this transformation? It's the convergence of four megatrends. The first is pervasive, tiny, and cheap sensing. Digital sensors continue to come down the Moore's Law curve and get cheaper, every, get, get cheaper and cheaper and more and more powerful every two years. Digital sensors have come down by, by around 90% just over the last five years themselves. 
decreasing storage and compute costs. So imagine a terabyte hard drive. Imagine wanting a terabyte hard drive in the year 2000. If you could put it all together, it would have cost you about $10,000. If you wanted to go buy a terabyte hard drive today at Best Buy, it costs you about $40. So that scale of cost down is, is phenomenal. There are new abilities to process and analyze data using parallel computing that, that is just impossible on a single computer, and ubiquitous connectivity. Cisco estimating we're going from 12 billion connected endpoints to 50 billion connected endpoints by 2020, with the large majority of that being machine-to-machine -machine communication. So these megatrends are driving digitization. They're driving interest in the Internet of Things. They're driving interest in the conversation around big data. They're driving interest in driving more and more workloads up into the cloud. And they're also putting much more of an emphasis on the value of time series data. And this is a lot to throw at you. So the question then becomes just how obvious is it what the next step to take is to unlock all of these trillions of dollars of value. I'm going to do this with a little bit of a survey. This is a survey that came from the World Economic Forum as well. They asked a, a couple of hundred of, of industrial IoT participants the following questions. The first question, do you understand the impact of IoT on your industry or business model? Think about how you might answer that question. Do you understand the impact of IoT on your industry or business model? 12% said yes, 88% said no. The blue line is yes. So the large majority didn't fully understand the impact of IoT on their industry or business model. Follow on question, will the adoption of IoT disrupt your industry? Is it going to happen? 72% say yes. So we don't fully understand it, but we think the disruption is coming. Final question, of those who do say yes, disruption is coming, will that disruption happen in the next five years? 77% say yes. So the next question, what will these IoT analytics be used for? The same World Economic Forum study lists the top seven of those, and you can read them here. It's a bit of an eye chart, but I'll mention the first two. Optimizing asset utilization, reducing operational costs. You'll hear 72 more of those use cases over the course of this user conference, but I put these up here to show that there is a common thread among all of these use cases that plan to use IoT data, and that is the value of time series data. So, where does that put us? There's trillions of dollars of value creation potential at stake. We're benefiting from these four massive technology megatrends. There is an enormous interest in operating data that has never been more important. The data that is stored in Pi systems have never been more important than it is today. So where does that put us? It sounds to me like there are some very exciting career trajectories in this room. Certainly a lot of job security. But I, I say that uh, in seriousness. I think we're on the verge of something pretty spectacular. I think that. We are on the verge of the industrial revolution of our time, using this data to optimize processes, to generate new revenue, and to create new businesses. So that leads us to a question that I think many of you may have brought to this meeting, and a question that I have some thoughts on. That is, what is your big data strategy? If anybody brought that question to this meeting, um, we're going to tackle it now. So in the spirit of BuzzFeed, and in the spirit of the old David Letterman, uh, David Letterman top 10 list, I now bring you the top 10 reasons why OSI soft pie should be at the center of your big data strategy. Number 10, time series data is different and it's critical for unlocking value in IoT analytics. I mentioned that in the use cases on the, on the last slide, but as you think about a big data strategy for analytics, time series data is gonna be critically important. Number nine, scale. A billion and a half data points. Customers running the Pi system currently run more than a billion and a half data points through those systems. Number eight, reliability. OSIsoft has a 30, a 30 plus year track record of reliability. This is not a company that just figured out that operating data was interesting or just figured out that there were some specific challenges of dealing with high frequency time series data. Number seven, an engineering culture. OSIsoft Pi is made by and for the people who are doing the work. Number six, 500 protocols. OSIsoft has built and maintained a library of hundreds of protocols over the last 30 years so that when you plug the system into an asset, to a plant, to your enterprise, it just works. Number five, a customer first philosophy. The business was founded on a notion that we will never leave a customer behind. It is true and it continues to prove itself over and over again. Number four, as Jenny said, the OSIsoft Pi system will meet you where you are. It spans assets, plants, enterprises, or communities. So if you're thinking that you want to do your work with the Pi system on the edge, the Pi system is built for that. If you think you want to level up into enterprise or community level analytics, the Pi system is built for that. Number three, independence of data collection sources. 
The Pi system works just as well with any manufacturer or OEM or any mix or combination of any manufacturer or OEM as a neutral data platform, and I think that's important. Number two is not just independence of data collection sources, but also independence in terms of data consuming applications or IoT analytics connected service platforms. Just as important to have that neutrality as you go and feed all sorts of different new analytics or business models. And number one, context. Once again, as analytics are moving into the realm of big data, moving into the realm of advanced analytics, that sounds to me like you're moving from working on a specific asset to working on a plant level, a, an enterprise level, or eventually a community level. And if you are going to do that work, you need to have a consistent definition of what your assets are and what events you are looking for. OSI Soft delivers you that capability with the asset frameworks and event frames, and it's, it's critically important. If you want a slide to see what this looks like, and I'm wrapping up now, if you want a slide to see what this looks like, I'll show it to you here. On the bottom, you've got your control systems, your sensors, your millions of assets, your hundreds of different protocols feeding up into that neutral OSI Soft data infrastructure. There, the information is organized, it's contextualized, and with the help of the asset framework, it's turned into a single source of truth for all the rest of your monitoring and big data analytics and applications. I don't have time to get into this now, but sending bunches of streams of time series, raw time series data straight up into a data lake is a recipe for heartbreak. I can talk to you about that at length. I really don't have time to talk about it now, but if you want to discuss that, find me afterwards, find me at some point this week, and I'm happy to go through it. Organized secure, contextualized data is the basis for unlocking all of the value of these industrial analytics. And the OSI Soft Pi system, as the information infrastructure for the operating world, is the system that is at the foundation and will be the launch point for those new successes. So now, that's a lot to throw at you. That's my read on the market. It's an exciting time to be in your position. I know the team at OSI Soft is really fired up to spend the time with you this week to talk about ways that you can use this data that has never been more interesting to find new ways to generate revenue, to find new ways to generate productivity, and see where it goes. I'll now hand back to Martin. Thanks. Thanks Todd. You're not leaving. Okay. Yeah. I, I, sorry, David. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I couldn't let you leave the stage okay. uh, because not only did you give us a perspective. How many people are trying to write a business case right now, and they like those ten lists? You can get a picture with Dave in that list of ten items. You didn't have to take a photo of it. And uh, he can sign it with you on the, on the way out in the lobby. But uh, the good part is it's the support like this when we see from an outside perspective that is so helpful and uh, definitely a believer. So thank you, David. Yeah. Pleasure. Mark.